We are on Greater Tomorrow Platform. You're welcome to another edition of Greater Tomorrow Platform. Greater Tomorrow Platform is a program that is designed to showcase our young people. And when I mean young people, I mean from very young to young, you know, to teenagers, perhaps even young adults. So we showcase them when they come to air their views they come to show us their skills they show their talents i mean even schools you can come and make presentations of your young people anything young people is what this platform is about and we showcase them call it celebrating our young people on air that is what greater tomorrow platform is about you're welcome to another edition of Greater Tomorrow Platform. I am Chinyere Adeyemo. This morning we will be looking at handling peer pressure, handling peer pressure, especially by adolescent boys. If you watched our program last week, you will remember that we looked at handling peer pressure by adolescent girls. And this week, I just decided, okay, let's flip the coin and let's bring in adolescent boys. Let's also hear how they handle peer pressure or the advocacy they will make to their fellow teens in handling peer pressure. So this morning, we're looking at handling peer pressure, especially as it concerns adolescent boys. With me in the studio this morning, I have two adolescents, two young men, and we will be trashing the topic as we look at handling peer pressure. So we have in the studio with me Olua Darasimi, Olua Jimmy. Darasimi, tell our viewers hello. Hello. And we have Emmanuel Adeyemo. Adeyemo, you're welcome to this program. Now, we're looking at handling peer pressure. How will you describe peer pressure? How will you describe peer pressure? There are some. To me, peer pressure is simply... Um, Can you make your voice louder? Yeah. Simply um, an, an effect of being among your friends. How, how it affects your behaviors, your values and your beliefs. And conforms you to being in like those of your friends okay can you put it in simple english like if you want to just pick it together and put it in one small simple english you talk about behavior you talk about effect you talk about conforming you talk put it in small simple english okay. simply being a friend um like a, per, um, a person's um, personal beliefs okay. simply being a friend like your behavior being influenced by those of your friends, the friends you keep. All right. Thank you, Darasimi. So Darasimi said peer pressure is being influenced by the, your behavior being influenced by the beliefs or the behavior of the people you keep. Olu, um, Emmanuel, Oluwa Emmanuel, <laughs> Emmanuel, what is peer pressure? What do you understand by peer pressure? Well, to me, I... No, you shouldn't be thinking. To okay. you, peer pressure to is... To me, peer pressure is, is where one is being influenced or one wants to feel among, especially when he's, he's with his friends, where his friends are doing a particular thing and he wants to feel among. He's, he's pushed the things that his friends do 
once he is under a particular kind of pressure that he would want to feel among with what his friends are doing. And do the things. And do the things. Okay, so peer pressure, like he said, is that um, resultant effect of wanting to feel among to do what the other person does, even if ordinarily you would not have done it. Okay, so why do people now remember last week I said that peer pressure is not limited only to adolescents. Adults feel peer pressure, children feel peer pressure. As a matter of fact, as long as you are in the midst of people, either as people in a society or something, there will all, and you see what is happening regularly, there will always be the tendency or the temptation to succumb to the pressure that comes from what these people do. Can you tell me more about peer pressure? Are there types of peer pressure or something? Okay, so what are the types of peer pressure we have? It can be positive or negative. Okay, that there are positive peer pressure types and negative peer pressure types. Emmanuel, do you want to give me an example of a positive peer pressure? Okay, positive peer pressure, it, it, it happens to someone when someone that is, that is brought up, that is brought up well. Sorry, that is in the midst of people that commit evil and then sorry, positive peer pressure. Someone that is brought that is not brought up from a good background. Like he is in the midst of he grew up in a place where they smoke or they drink alcohol and then he has maybe in school or in a gathering, he has friends who who are against smoking or alcohol. Who they don't who see, who see alcohol and smoking as no, they can't do it. So the friends he keeps, they they influence him not to do what he was brought up with. Okay, so he gave an example of um, like we're talking about positive peer pressure. So a situation where a a young boy who is coming from a background where they smoke or they drink or something finds himself in an association, in a group of young boys who don't smoke, who don't drink, and then he gets influenced. Remember we said, basically, peer pressure is about influence. It's about that influence, the effect of that influence that brings about a change in behavior. And right now, we are discussing positive behavior. Dara Simi, can you give us any other example of Okay. Good um, For example, if a child was brought up in a family that don't um, attend church programs regularly and they don't really like fancy going to church or anything church and he keeps friends that are always about things of God and always they like going to church, they also come to church. Voice the friends can influence him to maybe one of the days that they are going for a church program. Can just influence him and tell him to come and go out and you develop the habit of going to church. All right, so he's talking about still positive peer pressure. He gave an example of a situation where, for instance, a, a child who does not have religious inclinations becomes friendly with another who goes to church, for example, regularly and then gets invited to come for a church program and he likes it and over time begins to attend church and eventually has an encounter with God for himself. All right, do we have other examples of positive peer pressure? Emmanuel. Positive peer pressure. We, yes. Positive peer pressure. We have something, we have a scenario like where a child who the parents don't don't you speak out too. the parents are not after his well being. They are not interested about his emotional life or where they don't they don't know their child. When I mean no, I mean they don't bother to have time for their child. They don't ask themselves 
they don't ask their child questions about how they are how they are faring, how the how what what is really going on in their lives and all those kind kind of things. But he is among friends who they share their issues together. They they yes they might be young but an issue that that is shared among friends. It is not it is not a secret at least you would have somewhere that you will be able to say okay they would always find the solution that is another advantage of positive um, let me try and get you now you're talking about the the advantage now is in the association with the friends that okay. share his problems okay so he's saying that you know i i I picked something from what he said that parents who don't really know their child, maybe I should divert a little, just a little. Should parents know their children? Of course. What do you mean by parents? I mean, for instance, Darasimi's mom knows he's Darasimi Uluajimi. She knows where he sleeps and she knows the school he attends. Isn't that enough knowing? What other, or oh, is not? Okay, what other ways can a parent, parents, I hope you are listening, what other ways can a par should a parent know the child as adolescents coming from you? What ways do you want your parents to know you? Sorry we are diverting from peer pressure, but I want us to pick this. Yes? I feel um, parents should know the type of friends that their children keep. Okay. They should know the kind of um, places they go to. They should know... Uh, As in, every time a child is going out, the child must tell the mother or the not, father the exactly. timetable of where he is going to. Exactly. Or maybe sharp. But like the, the parents should know that okay, um, if my child is going out, he cannot go to the bar. He cannot. They should know the whereabouts of the child every time. They should know the things that a child can do. A child. Okay. Uh, and they should be able to um, communicate frequently with their children. They should know um, if they are having any body in their hearts, they should be able to express it. Children, you don't take me the children to go and tell yeah, their parents if they have a problem. The Must the par are they soothsayers? Must they be the ones to always the know once they speak? have well. concern for their children's um, emotional or maybe other aspects of their lives. They should not just limit it to streets. Um, okay. Emmanuel, you want to add something to what he said? Yes, he said something about um, their children, children and parents knowing where their children go to. Well, I think if a child is brought up well, if a child has strong, strong, um, how do I put it now? He has a strong background. That is, he knows his left from his right, and he knows good decision. He knows when to make a good decision. He knows when to make a bad decision. I don't see why a child should not be free there is a, yes there is a particular limit to which freedom should be exercised should not be free to do what let's say for instance i want to go out okay and okay my mom is like where am i going to and i'm like okay i want to okay i want to even go and see my friends and she's like which friend already the questions that are coming out, they will not want, they will not want, even if I'm not truly going to see my friend, the questions that are coming out, the child already knows, okay, we are getting to the stage where more questions will keep coming out for my answers, and the likely answer, the, the likeliest thing she would say will be, no, you can't go with it. So, as a child, or, or as a parent, I feel a child should should be given yes a child should be given that space especially if not i don't mean a child of, i didn't say anything i'm just <laughs> smiling i don't i don't, mean, I don't mean i don't mean a child <laughs> that is below a particular there's some there's a there's a age where you should allow your child have freedom this will larger thing and there should also be a time where the child should know that okay by so 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 time you should be back home that is that is the rule that my parents are. and if if things like if the the thing about opening up to one parent to a parent is where you just 
give you don't you don't choke them with a lot of rules. You don't choke them with a lot of don't do this, don't do that. Ah, if I do this, my mommy will do this. If I do that, my daddy will do this. You let them because after a particular time, the child will not be with you, and you, it is what you allow the child to. And if the child makes a mistake, you correct him. If it is what you allow the child to do, that he would know that okay, this is the good thing and this is the bad thing later on when he's not. Okay, parents, if you're listening, it uh, looks like we're learning parenting 101 here now. They are telling us that we should give our children freedom. Isn't that a generational thing? You know, as a child too, whenever I wanted to go out and I told my mother, uh, she would say, where are you going to? I say, I'm going out. She would like, you? Now, my mother is a do, so she will speak it in pidgin. She would like, you never reach to go out. Even your papa know they go out where you know they talk where they go. You, they go out, you know, go talk where they go. So now they are saying we should trust them to go out without necessarily telling us where they are going to, okay? I will not say anything to that, but the, 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 the crux of what they are saying is that we should give them some form of freedom, you know? And um, I think I also picked something from what they said about rules, that when our relationship with our children is only about rules, then they will feel choked, Abby? They will feel choked, so we should trust them, we should, we should kind of grow with them and trust them to make decisions and like he said that even if they make mistakes so i think they even agree they may make mistakes and hopefully it wouldn't be grievous mistakes you know mistakes they will learn from their mistakes all right let's go back to peer pressure give me examples of negative peer pressure negative peer pressure there are some okay um a child from background where um, his parents don't drink, they don't um, drink, they don't do vaccine and all that, then he, he now um, gets to a certain age and keeps friends who are always talking about parties, the next party to attend, then you want to, you feel pressure to at least just try a party and over time you get used to attending parties and doing things that was not used to. Okay. Do you have any other example, Emmanuel? Uh, it's a boy, because we're talking about boys, a boy who is brought up from a background where before any activity happens, is going to happen, they pray if maybe the child wants to eat and he pray, he, the, in their family they usually pray for the over time when he goes out and he keeps bad company with them and the children don't they don't see they don't even pray who are the children his friends his friends they don't even pray not to talk of praying before any activity he will start feeling what what exactly am i doing with prayer so it has and if it's if they are more than one that don't if it's just a friend he, he can still meet, he can still balance it, but when they are more than one that are talking and are pressuring him, what is this? Why are you forming Maria Maka? Why are you forming? Yeah, Maria Maka, okay. Why are you forming SU and all those kind of things? The child, yes, the child may be strong, but continuous talking would break something inside the child. Okay, so that's an example of a negative peer pressure. Do you have any other one you want to share, Darasi? Okay, last week when I had the girls on air, they talked about dating. That is close to my heart. I want to hear about dating from the boys' perspective as we wrap up this program. Let's talk about dating. Do boys get pressured to date? Because, you know, generally, I mean, in the society, it is assumed that ah, it is the boys that are always doing the chasing. It is the boys that are always looking for the girls. It is the boys that don't allow the girls rest and all that and all that. But I want to ask you now as young boys, is that true? Do girls pressure boys to date them? There are some. Yeah. Oh, really? Tell me some about cases, it. No, In some cases, no. tell me about it. Well, if, if a girl really likes a boy, and she has, I don't know, it might not be 
true feelings. Maybe she's just attracted by his maybe the guy is tall with his handsome. Okay, those are the things girls get attracted to. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell. I'll take you on it too. But continue, <laughs> continue. So um the girl might tell the guy that she likes him, but the guy's not Okay, the girls are that bold these days. Yeah, some girls they actually go to tell the girl the guy, I like you. Oh yeah. And okay. Some girls are really demanding. They want more. They want relationships. Mm. Meanwhile, the guy might ask someone else that he likes or he's not even like doing anything with the person, but just they are just close. Then in some cases the girls go to the extent of confronting the girl that um, as the other guy likes. Yeah. Oh so yeah. The girls they they do some things that are not I don't really make sense. Maybe saying um, this guy's my boyfriend, stay away from him and all that. This girl's safe. Girls, are you listening? And that we actually go to fight. Go to fight so that we can maintain a boy. Okay. Emmanuel, do you have any example you want to share? Of girls yes. pressuring boys. Yes. Like his head. Yes, girls do pressure boys. Oh, okay. For instance, a girl who is way younger than a guy. So it, it's now very bad that a child of 12, a child of 13, could be um, confessing her feelings to a guy of 18. 12 and 18. Ah, in child abuse balance, that is child sexual abuse. Oh, go on. <laughs> that so, is child sexual so abuse. Yes, the guy. The girl is abusing the boy. <laughs> yes, the guy may not necessarily have feelings for the girl, but for guys do. And the girl will, the girl keeps pressuring the guy. What does she do in terms of pressuring? Pardon my ignorance. Is it that she'll be sending texts to him if or she'll be calling? Okay. The, let's say their chance to like meet somewhere. Okay. She goes to his house or. <gasps> she'll go to his house. Or, I don't know. Okay. Okay. She might start giving him like some kind of signs that come. How do girls give signs? How we say you, uh, you know, is it how you people they give the signs to? Oh. I don't want to ask you personal questions now, but now you are for me. Okay, so give me, yes, you were saying something. So, a girl that, yes, they, how do they, how do they pressurize boys? They send constant messages. Constant messages. Constant messages. What if the boy doesn't have a phone? Is it every boy that has a phone? Well, some girls are that bold that they come to the boys. Ah. And... Yes, the, the parents, unfortunately, most of the parents, they are old school, so they just see it that this, they, won't, they won't see anything wrong in the child. Meanwhile, the boy knows what he's saying, and like we said the other time about parenting, the boy cannot share with his parents. Ah! If a girl comes to your house to harass you, why will you not tell your parents? Not harass, I mean, I'm the no. kind of mother that you should... <laughs> if the girl and the guy lives in the same area, for instance, the girl will come to his house often. Okay. It's not necessary because they have anything to see, okay. but just to come at his letting always have the To keep being in his face. His face all right. So, just before we wrap up, I have enjoyed talking with Olua Darasimi, Olua Jimmy, and Emmanuel Adeyemo, and we have been talking about handling teen pressure as adolescent boys. So, so far, we have talked about what peer pressure is. They have told us there are two forms of peer pressure, good peer pressure, bad peer pressure, um, negative and positive. They've given us examples. We even diverted into parenting where they said parents should know their children. They should, at every, well, at every point in time, know the emotional state of their children. And then we talked about examples of peer pressure. The last we just talked about was dating girls pressuring boys to date them now just before we wrap up there are me what word last word for that teenager out there who is facing peer pressure and wants to overcome it last word before we go okay uh, if the peer pressure is negative okay negative peer pressure uh, i feel you should know what is right and what is wrong. Don't, because of your friends, do what you and be regret later in life. Just stick to the right values. And if you don't know, 
don't um, smoke, don't drink, don't do what is not necessary at this. You've only called to. All right, thank you very much. Don't smoke, don't drink, don't do yao yao. Um, yes. They shouldn't do yao yao. Okay, yes. yes. <laughs> they shouldn't bet or they should bet. If you're not the age. Oh, there's an age. Yes. We will come back to that one next time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Last word for that teenager out there as we wrap up. If you're out there and you feel pressured, you want to feel among. I feel there's a time. There's a time for everything. At one point or the other, if it's money you're looking for, if it's freedom to go out, if it's, if it's phone, sometimes it's as little as phone. When your friends have phone and the when your friends have phone and you do have, just be patient. Everything will be okay. okay. So patience that if you feel others have and you don't have yet. Emmanuel says you should be patient, everything will fall in place. Thank you very much for listening to Greater Tomorrow Platform today. It has been nice talking with my adolescent teen guest. I am Chinyere Adeyemo. Till I come your way next week for a fresh package of Greater Tomorrow Platform, stay well. Bye-bye.